Hey everyone, I'm getting real fancy with you as you can see. Um, it's nighttime, but I posted a poll up on Instagram asking if you would like to see really like watch me do pretty much my nails from start to finish, like full na nail care routine, cuticles, filing, painting, boom, all of it. And a lot of you seemed really interested, so here we are. Um, I paint my nails a lot during the week, so I usually wear peely base, and I change my nails a lot, and um, I just oil oil them constantly throughout the week. But Friday nights, I tend to just paint my nails kind of for the weekend because I don't have time to paint and repaint my nails over the weekend. I have a three-year-old, so it happens. So. Friday nights is kind of my night that I sit and I do kind of a full nail care routine if I have time, if I remember. So I haven't shaped um, my nails in a while. I actually did this hand earlier so you can kind of see that these are a little sharper. So I did cute care and filing on this hand because that's what I'll be painting with and otherwise this video is going to be real long. I'm pretty much just going to talk through what I do with my nails. So right now I'm going to have base coat on because I always have base coat on no matter what if my nails are not painted. So I always try to keep something on them. That's what I attribute to, I mean aside from obviously the cuticle oil, I attribute just keeping my nails always painted to them maintaining their length. Obviously. It, things happen, they break, it happens, but um, they're pretty long right now. I need to pretty much just, you know, clean, clean them up. I clean, obviously clean my nails a lot since I take pictures, but you'll see once I flip the camera around to film my nails, you know, got to get them underneath. I'm going to take off the base coat that I have on. So I use for that, I, um, used the evil twin nails on instagram i will link him he had a you know make your own acid you know nail polish remover recipe that's kind of takes the white cast and the drying out of the acetone so i typically use this actual zoya but i used his recipe in here and i will link i will link it in the um, description the link to his video on how to do your own and it works really well so what i'm going to do now is before I get all set up, I'm gonna take off the base coat. So I'm actually gonna film taking this off because I did wanna talk about one thing, or maybe I won't film taking it off, but I use these, they're lint-free wipes. I get them from Amazon. I need to set up my Amazon storefront. And this is all I use to take off polish. They're lint-free, so they, um, they don't like snag on your cuticles or if you really have any significant like hangnails or anything funky like that. And I really like them. I feel like they get a lot of stuff off without feeling like they also soak up all of the acetone or remover or whatever you're using. So I'm gonna keep removing these. And when we come back, I will show you the cuticle removal process that I use. Okay, we are prepped and ready for action. You can see uh, my nails are dry. Um, I'll probably go through the base with this side and then I'll paint them later, but I won't film that just so we'll stick to this hand. I'm actually going to back up my camera a little so we just have a little more room to see. Um, I am doing this on a silicone mat that I just got from Amazon as well. Um, sometimes I shoot reels on this and sometimes I shoot reels on foam board. So... I'm actually going to run down kind of the list of items that I use. So let me start setting them out. Um, what we're going to use today, pretty much from start to finish. So this is the cuticle remover that I'm currently using. It is from Glisten and Glow. This one smells like strawberries. I got this one as PR and I've gotten a few of theirs and they're really good. I really like their cuticle remover. Um, and they smell really nice. So after I remove cuticles, here's the tool for that. Um, 
then I pretty much oil my nails. I push, you know, I use this to push back. And then from there, I will um, shape my nails. So cuticle remover is kind of the first thing that I do. Then I shape, then I file, and then oil, or cuticle remover, shape, file, oil, and then I'll dehydrate my nails and then paint them. So we do the cuticle remover first, then I have um, Swamp Gloss is the base coat that I'm gonna use today. And then I'm gonna use actually Moon Cat's primer. I don't always use primer, especially when I'm swatching. I like to be pretty accurate with the colors. This just kind of gives you a little less visible nail line while still maintaining it, but just kind of neutralizes um, your base. So I do like it, especially when I wear stuff kind of for the weekend and just in general, because it just gives you a little bit of opaqueness without taking away too much. And then the colors I'm gonna use today, I just got this one, which is Shimmer Storm um, from Damn Nail Polish. So I'm gonna be using this one on this hand. And if you know me, you might know that I don't ever match my nail polish. I'm going to be using this new Kathleen & Co. pink cream, which I did receive this one as PR, but this is, I think, pink bikini. I'm going to use that one on this hand. Once again, we're not going to see this hand, but just know this one's on it. And then I'll finish up with top coat. I'm using Olive Ave's top coat. This one does not contain too, too lean, too lean. Um, I, I use Glisten and Glow's top coat a lot too. It's very, very fast and dries really hard and it's really nice, but I also really, really like this one if you're looking for another option. And then the other tools that I use are these. These are kind of blunted nail clippers. I use them to shape my nails. So they're blunt. I do not use them to um, clip around my cuticles. I also have these, which are sharp. Um, these are sharper um, cuticle nippers. I don't nip my cuticles, but you know, if you sometimes have some calluses or little things like that that we can't always get rid of, I, I keep them on hand, but I just tend to push back my, my cuticles unless there's like an issue. So. My nails are ready to go. We're gonna start with this. All right, it is uh, cuticle remover time. So this particular one has like a doe foot applicator. I know that there's um, a handful of other kinds. Like I said, I really like this one and I find that it works really well. So what I do is just kinda crank it and get it all over the nail bed I do get the sides of my nail bed because I get calluses on my hands. Um, we all do. So, you know, I get calluses. Apologies if this kind of goes in and out of focus. I'm not used to filming all of my hands at the same time, especially doing something like this, so I might not be in focus. I'm going to try to talk slowly. I can be a bit of a fast talker. So what we do is just kind of apply it all over the nail. Don't try to get too much of your skin. I mean, obviously I got some, but I also know my skin sensitivity. Um, my skin's not too sensitive around my nails. So I know I can kind of get away with not, you know, it's, it's fine if I get some on here. And so then we follow the instructions on here and it says to let sit for 60 seconds. Um, then you push back with your favorite tool and then wash with soap and water. So I'm gonna let this sit and then I'll be back to show you um, pushing back. All right, it's been about a minute. So um, I'm gonna take this guy that I got from Amazon and you can see it's not too deep here. I know some of these are pretty deep. Um, and you, I'm gonna scrape this along the nail bed. 
essentially. And this is kind of like to scoop. I don't ever use this side or I, you know, I rarely do unless there's a lot of schmutz, but you know. So let's get you back in focus. I take this, let's actually turn this to the side and get a little bit closer if I can. I take this and then you kind of just start pushing along the side here and you can kind of see stuff starting to come up. I try to do my cuticles, I try to do my cuticles every week, but I'm kind of bad about it. But what I do at least once or twice a week is I oil and then push them back as well, which counts in my opinion. But you can kind of see all the stuff that's coming up. Um, I'm applying barely, you know, very light pressure to this. Um, it's probably been about two weeks since I've done a full cuticle thing. So I try to really get in the grooves and just be gentle on my nail bed. You can also see, I think you could probably see in the video that I do have some damage on my nails. Uh, that is because I'm a nail polish picker. I usually wear Peely Base, but I wore gel months ago and I'm still kind of growing out the damage from that because it lifted and I peeled it and don't be like me folks, but we're all human. So anyway, um, yeah, there you go. That's kind of, you know, what comes out from this. I'm going to do the rest of the nails. Um, I don't love I don't love doing my cuticles. I love how it looks because you kind of don't think you're doing anything and then your hands just look totally different once you're done. But um it it makes my me almost nauseous to do them. I don't know if I'm just a weirdo. Uh, let me know if you ever feel nauseous when you do cuticle care. For some reason, pushing my cuticles back makes me like feel like my heart's racing. It's funky. But you can also see, so since it's been about 60 seconds, the cuticle um, remover is drying a bit. So you definitely want to just kind of leave it at that 60 seconds for sure. Um, some of my nails don't get a lot of stuff coming up, but yeah. And then this is the last one. So after I scrape these all down, you can see there's a lot of gunk on my on my pusher. I'm going to go wash my hands now with soap and water to kind of clear the rest of this out. And when I come back, I will um, just apply some cuticle oil and I'll push them again and just kind of make sure it's all, I'm all I like cleared all the gunk out of there and stuff. So I will be back. Okay, I'm back and you can see I wash with soap and water. You really wanna do both um, to get, you know, to make sure your hands are clean. You don't leave the, you know, the remover and stuff on your hands. My hands are dry. Um, but yep, you can see I still kind of have some, some stuff going on with this. So what I do after I um, use the cuticle remover is I go in and I just oil, oil them up. I use, um, this one's my favorite. I mean, not necessarily the scent. The scent is amazing, but Shop NBM has cuticle buddies and I really like their, um, how their oil feels. I feel like it soaks in quickly, but really leaves your nails hydrated. Um, I have just a ton of the cuticle buddies, so I really love these. So I go in after I remove the cuticle and you know, push everything back. And I just wanna rehydrate, especially because I also just washed my hands. So my hands are feeling pretty dry and I have a million of these. The mix of this one is really nice. So she uses jojoba oil and a, you know, a bunch of other stuff, but um, yeah, it feels nice. So what I do after this is I just kind of push back a little more and kind of get in here to make sure I kind of get it all cleared out because I don't always get in there with the 
scraper. And now I have to take a pause break to um, take plastic away from my cat, which I'm pretty sure you can hear her chewing on. So I'll be right back. Um, so yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't clip my cuticles back. Um, I mean, so there's, you know, there's some people who, who think it's fine and some people say never ever do it. I feel like do what you want. Um, but yeah, I mean this, the cuticle is like this part of your nail and that's the dead skin that you want to scrape off. If you were to cut your nails, then, or you know, the skin that's here, this is living skin. So you don't necessarily want to cut it, but if you push it back, and this is also what I do during the week, if you push it back, it, you know, kind of trains the skin there to, you know, to kind of relax a bit so you don't have, you know, really, you know, a really um, prominent nail fold because it's called your proximal nail fold here. So I just kind of get to go, I kind of go all around and make sure that I get all the, all the gunk out. And you see, I'm just using like just this little wooden stick. I have a ton of them. I use them all the time. I use them for cleanup. I use them to clean under my nails. I use them for everything. So, yep, push it all back. And then, you know, clean underneath. I clean underneath my nails all the time. And I always feel like they look dirty. I don't know if it's just like the way that my my nails are, but that's that's just something that I deal with personally. So after I clean my nails underneath, I am going to trim and file them. So I will be back in one moment to kind of show you how I do that. So now we're on to the shaping section of the program. I know that I get a lot of questions on how I shape my nails. Um, they're decent right now, but I do um, tighten them up a little bit. So I do a mix of pretty much maintain with a file. I use a glass file. This one's from Mooncat. Um, I like it. It's a little thick, but it works nicely. And I use these every so often, as I mentioned in the beginning. So pretty much what I tend to do with this, let me see if I can move a little closer and get this in focus, is I pretty much, I don't have a lot to trim right now, but I trim here and usually trim further down than that but um, the shape on this nail is not too bad so I don't really have a lot I can pretty much just focus on the cleanup of this one sometimes they get um, sometimes they just get a little out of whack you can see I still have my schmutz there which I'll get with cuticle oil but you can see with this one I could probably trim it a bit so what I do is, I will go slow for this. These are pretty blunted. Um, I'm sorry for all like the cat hair. I have a cat, my cat people, you know how it goes. I just kind of go in and try to find a line to maintain and then I trim along there. Sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's not. Um, this nail is also very long. So I'll probably file it down a bit, but you can kind of see that like this one's come, this side's coming in a little more than, sorry if I'm tapping a lot, I am using my phone. So this side's coming in a little more than that. So I probably will actually trim this side a little bit more. So we'll see how it goes. I definitely go for like less than you think you need because I have fully broken many nails this way and there you go so I um you can see it just looks kind of a little uneven but that's fine I trim them all 
and then I go back in with the file. So we're gonna just kind of get everyone straightened up right now. Um, I'm always afraid of going too far in, but sometimes you really do have to cut some of the nail off, but that's also why I oil because flexible nails don't break. See, this one's not letting me cut it, so I'm not gonna force it. Flexible nails, so like when you oil your, na your nails, they stay flexible. They don't break like, um, your nails aren't gonna break the way that they might if your nails are dry. So that is another reason to always keep them oiled is that they bend, they give a lot more than if your nails are dry. You can see I cut like a quite you know quite a bit off of that one. And yeah. So this is essentially how I get like the base shape of my nails and then I'll, most of it's filing and a lot of the maintenance is filing. I don't use my other cuticle nippers for this one because um I use those on my skin <laughs> so I don't like to mix them so you're gonna see these get um a lot more refined this side I just said I did them earlier so they're a little sharper so what I do is um glass file and I just kind of start going and I'm gonna see how we do this here there we go let's see if we can lock it in I just start going in and I mean I try to keep it even I don't go too heavy but I just go in from the side I kind of come down as well like um, I'm trying to show you the right angle here into the nail that way we're just like trying to really keep the line straight on the side and then the biggest one is across the top uh, contrary to popular belief, or maybe you've never heard this, but I've seen it a lot, you can file in both directions. It's fine. You're not going to split your nails anymore. I do it all the time. Uh, no one has time to just file in one direction. I'm just saying. So, I file across until I'm happy with it, and then I just kind of really do a little straightening up until it's where I want it to be. So, they're never, <laughs> they're not perfectly even, um, especially the thumbnail. My, you can see this side's not even either, but I just try to kind of keep them crisp and then I'll kind of like flip, like run the file in the opposite way because sometimes you get like the dust that comes up and that's a real pain when you're trying to paint your nails. So I'm gonna continue with the rest. And you're gonna see this one shape up nicely. Once again, I am sorry if this goes out of focus. I do move my hands a lot. So, oh, you also see that I, I will flip my hands up, especially on the rest of my fingers to make sure we are even straight across for this. So you can see it's starting to shape up already. I like to just kind of get up the sides. Like you see, I'm kind of bring it in a little bit just to shape it a little more. This nail is long, so I'm probably going to file a lot more off the top of this one than I would normally, but this one's longer than the rest. So I file from the top and then, yep, I just kind of keep going in. Um, not too, I, I go a lot heavier. I'm pretty hard on my nails. I have pretty thick nails, so I know I can kind of, they can take it. But this right here, filing from underneath, helps me make sure that I'm, that they're straight. So, there you go. That one is done. Or, you know, I can keep going in, like, I always say it's done, and then you're like, oh, well, I can straighten up a little more, and then blah, blah, blah. Or, it's not, or sometimes they don't look perfectly straight this way, but when you do this, they're straight. So you might see that, because, you know, we're human. None of us have perfectly symmetrical features so I'm gonna keep going with this and 
this is this was one that I did cut um, with the clippers. You can see this one too, how the, the end is a little funky, but yep. And this is pretty much it. There's no, like, I don't have like a big secret. I just kind of came across styling like my nails in this way because I don't like when my nails are super short. You can see I still have like stuff here. I don't like my nails being super short, but you know, sometimes they are, but when they grow, they grow a little wide and I have pretty large hands. I have pretty, or you know, I have long fingers. So I, I do like to, I like to keep my nails long, keep it balanced. So there's that one, two down. And then this one we did cut some off of and it's kind of the same ritual. Some some weeks I need more, more filing than others. These are actually, these held their shape pretty well. Like I said, I do this like maybe every two weeks or so, just the filing. Um, just to make sure we stay nice and neat. I like having the straight lines. So this one is a good example of this nail is not straight. My finger's not straight. But when you do this, you can't really tell. So just remember if you are filing your nails, if something doesn't look straight, <laughs> fold, fold your hand the other way to see if they just look straight the way that you want. So I really try to not obsess about like perfect, perfect nails because I mean, natural nails are natural nails. Um, yeah, what are you gonna do? They're not, they're not plastic. So also that's kind of why I do what I do with swatching too, right? You want to see what nail polish looks like on real nails. No offense to anyone who likes fake nails because they do look amazing and it must be freaking awesome to just always have like perfectly symmetrical nails or not worry if your nail breaks, but I would, I would pick them off. So that's it. That is filing my nails shaping my nails you can see there's still you know stuff going on up here but that's it i try to get like the leftovers out before i start painting i'm going to clean up my mat and then i need to dehydrate my nails which i will talk about with you when i do that but life pro tip if you um use a silicone mat for all of this stuff the easiest way to clean this up is, if I can find it, a lint roller. So, of course it's not gonna do that right now, but like, you can just lint roll your mat. If you've got cat hair or if you have like funky stuff on there, this is like way easier than like alcohol wiping it down, especially for like little hairs and stuff. I will probably clean this more, but yeah. So now we do, we're gonna do the fun stuff. I'm gonna get ready here and I guess I'll just keep talking since I'm pretty much there there's no need to stop you're gonna have to bear with me with this long form since I've never actually um, talked through a manicure before so what I'm gonna do before applying base coat you still see I have um, maybe not I have oil on my hands so because I oiled I have um, like a jar that has acetone in it. It's just pure acetone. And I'm gonna dehydrate my nail beds before getting started because your, your polish is not gonna adhere to your nail beds if they are oily. So you'll see that one dried it out and I just use this brush. This is also my cleanup brush. I just use this to like slap some on there make sure I get all of the oil off, make sure my nail beds are clean. It kind of gets the dust off too from filing. And you can see that it pretty you know, dries them out really well, which will let the base coat adhere. So we'll keep going through that. I'm gonna do both hands as well, since I'm not going to simultaneously paint my other hand but I am going to get it prepped to paint. I will paint that after I'm done filming. So there you go. All right, now it's time to paint. 
So now it's for the fun part, um, which is the part I'm also hopefully a little better at filming. I'm going to apply base coat. I'm going to use Milkshake by Swamp Gloss. Um, and I like this base coat a lot. I will use pretty much any base coat, really. And um, I mean, I like the milkier ones, but I'm just going to go in and apply base coat. So because I'm going to do the primer on top of this, I'm only going to do one coat of base coat. So there you go. Um, this one dries. This one's not as milky as some that I've used, but it's not bad. A life pro tip, if you have pets, just don't touch anything after you do your nails because you see that I've got freaking cat hair and stuff all over the place on here do my best to keep this in focus since I also don't typically paint all of my nails. So I know the this formula pretty well, so I feel pretty confident in like how much I need on my brush. But that's a big part of like not flooding your cuticles and stuff is knowing how much polish to have on your brush and the formula like this is a little watery it is a base coat so it's not like formula like a like a polish polish so um I bring this right up to my cuticle line at the bottom and yep go from there so in terms of timing like waiting between um layers and like for drying and stuff I never time anything, I just paint my other hand. So usually by the time I'm done, I know I said I wasn't gonna do this one, but here we are. Usually by the time I'm done painting this hand, the other hand's dry enough for me to paint again on it. So I'm, I'm not super precious about the base coat, but I always wear one. Um, you know, protects your nails and help, hopefully, hopefully keeps you from being you know, from staining or anything like that. I'm not too worried about the polishes that I'm wearing today, but this does also help polish adhere to your nails. So, yeah, I'm not usually super precious about how I do it. You'll see as I, when I actually apply the color, that I'll be a little cleaner with how I apply. However, if you don't want your polish to peel, you really kind of don't want to flood your cuticles, which I did a little bit here, but it's a base coat, so. So I just do one coat of that. Once again, this one's the Swamp Gloss Milky Base Coat. Um, I really like Swamp Gloss a lot. Um, and I mean, I might let this dry a little more, but it's pretty, um, it's a pretty thin layer. It's not gonna dry matte or anything like that. So I'm then gonna move on to the primer. So this is the moon cat like prep and prime and it's kind of like a ridge filler um primer duo kind of thing i really like moon cat i like this one in terms of just you'll see it just is you know it's pink and it just kind of blurs the nail line a little bit and giving giving the color a really nice like base to go on without um without actually kind of taking away from the color. I found that if you use a blurring base coat, you might as well be painting on like, what's the word, like a, you know, like if you're painting on like a cream polish or something, I don't really love a blurring base because I like the glow. I'm gonna try to get these closer to the cuticle. And that way, yeah, I like the glow that you can get when your nails, when you don't have like a full opaque base on, but this is a really nice um, balance between that to kind of give you a nice neutral base without, um, yeah, just kind of taking too much away. It's pretty pink, but I haven't found that it, you know, skews any of my polishes more pink or anything like that. It just is pretty neutral. For me, I just put a lot on here. So 
I'm actually going to use this for two nails. So because I'm also doing my nails for the weekend, I am a little more precious with how I do them, which um, it's because it's because I'm not wearing a PLE base. Usually when I wear PLE base, like, you know, you, I know I'm going to take them off soon. So this is another one that I'm familiar with the, um, the formula of, so I can just kind of get in there. I'll show you what I do with um, polish, what you know, especially if I'm not super familiar with the formula. So these are all prepped for polish now. All right, I'm back with polish. So today on this hand or this weekend, I'm using Shimmer Storm by Damn Nail Polish, and this is really cool. I may have to shake this up a little bit just because um, it looks like some of the the glitter and stuff is stuck on the side but this was um a facebook custom that they did and i'm going to shake it up while i talk and um damn nail polish has mystery over pours on their website and um yeah i i scored this one i'm super excited about it i actually really wanted this one so i kind of regretted not picking it up so polish application. I, I'm going to go on a limb and assume most of you do know how to apply polish, but um, to get super clean application, I mean, I like to know the formula and then I pretty much wipe one side off and leave poli you know, polish on the other side. And you'll see that I don't, um, I don't do super light coats of polish. I don't do, or I mean, thin I don't, I'm not a super thin coat person for polish, so you'll see that I'll probably do, I think I'll probably do two, I, I typically do two coats of this polish, so it's really pretty. I'm also really glad I put that primer down for this because it's kind of sheer, but you can see I kind of have quite a bit on there, and I always start from the bottom, bring it up. Oh, this is pretty. Um, what I will do with this polish, I mean, because it was a Facebook, like an overpour, it's not something that you can just get. So I'm sorry. I do, I did want to use stuff that I thought everyone could get, but I just got this and um, I love it. So once again, sorry folks. But um, when their site opens again, I'll link it in the... Um, I'll link it in the description. Um, you I, you might be able to pick it up through ordering some of their overpours. I don't know if you can request specific ones, but um, this one is super pretty. I'm really happy I got it. So this looks like it's pretty, like a pretty, I'm not sure if it's a clear base or not, but it's a pretty light base with shimmer and looks like, you know, pink it looks like yeah pink glitter and <laughs> black flakies which I'm a sucker for um, so this is really pretty I really really like it this part's gonna fly I mean uh, the painting the nails is actually the fastest part for me I am gonna wait a little longer since I'm not actually painting um, two nails in a row or two hands in a row yet since I'm filming but um, so I'll wait between these uh, once again I don't time anything I just kind of go by vibes and how I feel like a polish is drying so this is coat number one of shimmer storm I don't know yet if I'm gonna need a glitter grabber um, that's just kind of what'll smooth this out if the glitter ends up being a little textured I'll be back for coat two. And now we're back for round two. So I'm gonna just go faster on this one since I'm really not talking through like how I do it. And yeah, I do think I'm only gonna do two coats of this polish. Cause I don't know, I like the shimmer. I don't think it needs three. It seems to layer really nicely. So. We're gonna fly through these. I'm just, yeah, I'm just gonna stick to the two coats. 
So this is typically what I do every weekend. You can see that I actually got a little polish on my um, on the side there. So what I do with that is I still keep like the little acetone and I just boop, clean it up on the side just to get it real quick. And then we'll keep keep on keeping on from here. So I do I do a lot of side cleanup and I'll do cuticle cleanup as well. And this color is pretty forgiving because it's like a shimmer. So um, yeah, it's I don't have to worry too much about like making sure I have a super clean cuticle line or making too much of a too much of a mess of my cuticles while I'm doing this. Um, if I continue on with my you know Friday night manicure videos then I'll probably, you'll see what I do when I actually mess with other colors that um, that aren't as forgiving. Because yeah, this one, if you get close to the cuticle, it's not like a big deal. So there you go. Close that guy back up. You can see I still, you know, there is some, there is some polish on my cuticles, so, you know, or on my, you know on the skin and stuff and that's also not going to dry super well once you put top coat on so i do tend to just run my cleanup brush along the side to make sure that i haven't flooded um flooded anything and then i'm gonna let these dry for a bit i don't obviously let them like dry dry because you can just you know, put top coat on. Um, I do not think I'm going to use a glitter grabber. This seems to all, you can kind of see, there's like maybe a little bit of texture um, as it's drying, but I don't really think it needs glitter grabber. I'm not gonna go the extra step tonight to do that. So I will be back to show you top coat. So the final step is top coat. Um, I like Olive Ave's. Um, quick dry top coat if you are looking for one without Tulane, which is, you know, whatever you do you. Um, for like quick dry top coats that have it, I usually use Glisten and Glow. Um, but I apply a pretty thick dollop of top coat and I really lightly float it over the polish. I don't press down too much, but I do a pretty thick drop. So one drop kind of covers everything. And then I do cap my nails. So capping just kind of brings the polish like underneath. I didn't super cap the this polish in general because it's it's a pretty clear one, but I do tend to cap my polish. Um so yeah, I do a pretty nice size dollop of a top coat. There you can see I've used a lot of this one. And usually one can get, you know, get me through just my whole nail. And like I said, I float it. So floating your polish is when you, yeah, you just kind of very lightly apply it. I have a bit of a heavy hand, but floating is great, especially if you have like streaky colors and stuff too. But floating, I always float top coat. I might have also used a little bit too much on this nail, but not too bad. Top coat's another one that I will cuticle clean up because if it, or skin clean up, because if it sticks, you can see it goes on the side. If it sticks to your skin, it won't, your polish is just not adhering to the nail as well, so it'll give it more room to, to lift. So I do try to always kind of clean up the walls just on the side to make sure there's no, um, you know, over, overlay. So we can have our, you know, our polish last all weekend, which it typically does. This is a quick dry top coat also. Um, I swear by quick dry top coat, I mean, I'm gonna get into bed and to go to sleep <laughs> in um, probably
probably about an hour, which is kind of late for me, but I know that with quick dry top coat, I will not have sheet marks in the morning. That's like my number one. Like if you struggle with that, get a quick dry top coat. Um, there's some in stores as well. I, I think it's Seche Vit, Seche Vit, who has one. That's the one I used to use before I discovered Glisten and Glow. They have a really little brush though. And here you go. That's my full manicure from start to finish. Um, I will for sure be taking pictures of this one, but thank you so much for hanging out with me while I did this. I hope you learned something. Let me know what you think in the comments. Should I do this more? Do you have color requests or design requests? I still need to paint this nail, this hand, so I will show you that one. Um, I'm not great at nail art, but I could probably talk you through some stuff. And that's it. So you can follow me on Instagram at Polished Bookworm. Let me know if you have any questions or anything like that. I will link everything that I used in the description. And thank you so much for hanging out with me. Have a good night. Bye.